it's a, the one thing that separates this game from other. Now it's over to FIFA 07, where the game's roster of teams have grown to around 500 across 27 leagues and 20 countries, with over 10,000 licensed players in all. Still, there was a fairly big gap between the 6th and 7th generation versions of FIFA 07, with the Xbox 360 featuring a brand new engine. The new Wembley and Emirates stadiums appeared in the game, as well as new touches like Man of the Match awards and the arena was seen for the first time on the 360. The finesse shot was born, manager mode began to use real currencies, and the PS2 version allowed you to transfer saves to PSP. There was also an interactive lease feature which tracked real world results and fixtures and attempted to match them to fans clubs. Sounds very similar to something EA have just released. Here's Pascal Chimbonda. Intercepted there, but well, we'll see. Maybe not. Uh, Wayne Rooney's five year reign of cover terror continued with FIFA 08, which, although released for PC, PS2, and Wii, really shone on the 360 and PS3. The new engine had found its feet, and player physicality had improved to a point where people still use FIFA 08 as a benchmark for how things ought to be. Things felt a little slower and a bit more considered. We saw the introduction of Be a Pro in the form of offline practice, a tease for what was to come, and a part of FIFA that has gone on to affect nearly every mode since its introduction, spawning countless fan sites. The Trick Stick featured for the first time, changing the FIFA YouTube landscape forever, and Martin Tyler stole Clive Tilsley's seat in the next-gen commentary box, although Tilsley did feature in the PS2 version. As we inch ever closer to the current FIFA, it's now onto FIFA 09, where EA picked up the Beer Pro Ball and ran with it for the development of the game, introducing 10v10 clubs. Many people still consider FIFA 09 to be the best clubs experienced, and I'd be hard pushed to argue with that. Adidas Live Season allowed players to receive dynamic stat updates throughout the season, and user controlled celebrations, which first featured in Euro 2008, came online, and for 12 months solid, everybody just did the robot. Then there was a small matter of Ultimate Team, of course, which wasn't available on disc but as a separate download. If only we knew at the time just how big this would become. FIFA 09 was also the last FIFA to feature jerky lane changing movement because a big change to dribbling was just around the corner. The rails came off in FIFA 10 with 360 degree dribbling being implemented probably the biggest gameplay change made in recent years that was welcomed with open arms by all and whined about by none. Ultimate Team returned for FIFA 10 as a paid expansion and EA continued to test the waters of DLC by offering up the burner barrels of day one download for free. Elsewhere, Virtual Pro's got game face support, accomplishments and can be taken through four seasons of Beer Pro or be added to your manager mode squad. In manager mode last year as manager mode and the first year of the three year plan, Changes include the introduction of the assistant manager, changes to player growth, a more realistic sim engine and the ability to rename stadiums. That's a very good cross, well that's a great goal and the home team have taken the lead. Whilst we aren't covering games outside the main FIFA series in this list, I felt that FIFA World Cup 2010 definitely deserves a special mention. Not only is it my favourite FIFA game of all time, but it also brought with it the brand new penalty system which we all know and love today. As well as that, there was the online FIFA seasons which we now know as well in FIFA 13, and there was incredible changes to match atmosphere and uh, FIFA.com styling. The gameplay was essentially FIFA 10.5, what EA managed to do in this time was tweak, nip and tuck a lot of the problems from FIFA 10 and provide a much more enjoyable experience. This is definitely my favourite FIFA title. Here's Steven Gerrard. Defender really put his foot in there. Michael. PC users rejoiced as they moved on to the same engine used for the 360 and PS3 versions, meaning they could also enjoy changes like improved Keeper AI and Virtual Pros. Replay Theatre appeared, as did Set Piece Creation, and 10v10 expanded into 11v11, as we were now able to play as the goalkeeper. 
Martin Tyler was joined by Andy Gray for the commentary in what would be Gray's last FIFA as he soon found out that just because a camera isn't broadcasting it doesn't mean it's not on. Be a pro seasons and manager mode merged into career mode for FIFA 11 allowing you to also be a player manager as well as a player or manager. Also a quick mention for Ultimate Team which really got rolling as EA posted digital revenue income totaling $64 million for quarter 1 2012. Numbers that are perhaps related to EA's decision to no longer charge people to download the mode, but to bundle it on the disc for free and rely on microtransactions. Nearing the end now and we're on to FIFA 12, where after moving on to the same engine the year before there was more good news for PC players, as FIFA 12 was to be feature identical to the 360 and PS3 versions. One of those features was the Impact Engine, which led to some very hilarious YouTube clips. The introduction of tactical defending also upset half the user base, even more so when it turned out it was to be compulsory online. The online ranking system moved on to the season's format which we use now, with players receiving three points for a win and the occasional cup window. The EA Sports Football Club was launched, introducing regularly updated challenges and a persistent XP system that carried across all platforms. FIFA saw its first proper downloadable expansion in the form of Euro 2012 DLC, which ruffled a few feathers with its lack of licensing and it was deemed by many to be too expensive. Figures were impressive, with FIFA 12 being the highest grossing sports game in the UK ever, outselling rival pairs 25 to 1 with more than 10 million copies. If that wasn't enough, money continued to pour in from Ultimate Team, with the final figures coming in at around 108 million. EA went for a little more authenticity with the 2012 FIFA Street reboot, ditching game breakers for a more futsal style of play. Whilst it felt a little on rails at times, it did introduce a couple of touches such as the new street ball control which were tweaked for use in the main series. The release marked Messi's transfer from Pez and shook Wayne Rooney's grip on the UK covers and the game featured a Messi specific arena to complement the other 16 available. There were some questionable decisions made regarding online play, but there's no denying that the FIFA Street reboot captured the style it was after brilliantly and has people looking forward to finding out what happens with the series next. And all that brings us to where we are now, FIFA 13. First touch control was brought in to increase errors and slow things down whilst bringing some unpredictability from the real world into the game. Connect and move functionality were added. Ultimate team got a visual overhaul, a companion app and seasons which was also pushed into clubs. Skill games were added as a training mode of sorts. 360 degree shielding allowed you to protect the ball better. I'm sure I've heard that recently too. The impact engine was tidied up. Attacking AI and player runs were improved. Tactical free kicks provided a little more variety from set pieces and replay theatre is still shit. The game now boasted 34 fake stadiums, 26 real ones, 46 international teams, 34 leagues and an additional 15 teams in the rest of the world section. Love it or hate it, FIFA 13 has been breaking records all over the place. The demo was downloaded nearly 2 million times within 3 days on Xbox 360 and on September 30th 2012, 800,000 players were playing FIFA 13 simultaneously online. After shifting 7.4 million copies in the first 4 weeks post-release, the game went on to sell a total of 12 million by the end of 2012. And here we are, on the cusp of a console refresh, the next generation, and another 20 years of FIFA in front of us. It's a hopeful shot. Going for power from long range, and what a shot, what a goal!